everybody. Today we're going to talk about designing experiments. So this is going to be a two-part series and in the first part is really going to be more about memory tools of like what are these different parts of an experiment? How do I keep them straight? How do I remember which one's which? And then in my second video we'll look at examples so that you feel more confident um, when you have an experiment and you're looking at it, trying to figure out what the independent and dependent variable is. You can see that linked here. So we're going to be talking about a controlled experiment. A controlled experiment is one in which we only have one thing that the scientist is purposely changing. Everything else we try to keep the same. And the reason we do that is we can tell if that one thing I'm changing is making a difference. It's the only thing that could possibly cause the results that I see. So we're looking for a cause and effect relationship. And to do that, we have to make sure we're only changing one thing, okay? And that everything else is controlled, meaning kept the same, so that we can say for sure that it is the one thing that I changed on purpose that is indeed causing the results that we see. So there's three kinds of variables in a experiment. So sometimes kids are say, what, what do you mean variables? Well, you know how like in math class you have variables X, Y. Well, we have things that can change um, in an experiment. We call those variables. We have the independent variable, the dependent variable, and the controlled variables. We're going to go through each one. Um, they have very different meanings and different purposes within our lab. The independent variable is sometimes called the manipulated variable because it's what the scientist is changing. I'm manipulating it. Um, but the best way to remember it, I find, is that it's what I, the scientist, am changing. See how independent variable starts with I? It's what I'm changing is the independent variable. I'm the scientist. I'm changing it. A good experiment has only one independent variable. Okay, so we're going to change that one thing and then see what happens. And that's going to allow us to determine cause and effect. The dependent variable is sometimes called the responding variable because it changes all on its own. All on its own it changes. I didn't do anything to it. It's going to change as a result of what I changed. Um, sometimes kids think of it as the outcome or they think of it as the data. Sometimes data is a good memory tool because, see, dependent starts with D, data starts with D. Sometimes kids take the whole root here, depend, and say, okay, this depends on what I had changed as remembering what the dependent variable is. Now, kids often get these confused. And if you use logic, though, and you imagine the scientist doing the action, for the independent variable, that will usually help to solve which is which. For example, I have a worksheet where kids have to um, make a graph of the temperature of the water and the breathing rate of a fish. And um, so they have to be able to identify the independent and dependent variable in order to make a good graph. And I always tease them a little bit when they put um, temp as the dependent variable and independent variable what I'm changing is the scientist is a breathing rate because how ridiculous would that be like can you imagine the scientist what is he doing like grabbing the gills of the fish and making the fish breathe no the scientist could not possibly be adjusting the breathing rate of the fish right so that can't be the independent variable because it would just be ridiculous so therefore, the temperature of the water had to be the independent variable. It had to be the thing that I, the scientist, changed because the breathing rate has to change on its own. So sometimes kids like this graphic as a way of helping to remember um, independent and dependent variables. So um, the independent variables, what I, the scientist, am changing. It, so it starts with I. It's the cause. It's the thing that we're using as the cause to see if there is an effect. Um, you could also think about it as this is what's being manipulated or changed. 
and then this is what I'm measuring. It's the data that I'm collecting. It depended on what I changed. So a whole bunch of different memory tools. Hopefully you'll find one that works for you. You could even brainstorm some with your classmates about how do we want to keep these two words straight because they're important to keep, keep separate. All right, so there's another word, control group and controlled variables. Ah, it sounds so similar, I know, and it's really, really, really annoying, okay? The control group is your comparison, okay? It's how you know if what I was changing as independent variable even made a difference whatsoever. So, for example, if I was watering plants with, like, orange juice and milk and Coca-Cola, I would need to compare it to just watering it with water. If I didn't have that comparison group, I may be thinking like, oh, orange juice worked great. Look, it grew better than the others. Well, yeah, but it still did horrible compared to just water. So it's important to have a control group. So you have an idea of like, is this experiment even working at all? <laughs> um, some experiments don't have a clear control group. Like if you're looking at um, the angle of a ramp and how far the ball rolls. There is no like natural angle for a ramp, right? That doesn't even make sense. Um, so sometimes we do what's called an internal control. And that means that we're just going to compare the different trials to each other because there was no natural thing um, like, like water in the first experiment we talked about. All right, so here's the other word that sounds so similar, controlled variables. These are the things that we keep the same in an experiment. And this always is a list. It's all the stuff that you have to keep the same in order to make sure it's a really fair experiment. Um, the best memory tool I've come up with, well, probably my students helped me come up with it, is this S. See how there's an S there? That tells me what I'm coming up with here is a list. Control group doesn't have an S. Controlled variables does. And so that tells us, okay, yep, we're gonna have a list. And that makes sense because there's always many things we are keeping the same. So if we go back to that plant experiment we we're talking about a little bit ago, you'd have to make sure you're giving them the same amount of liquid. It should be the same type of plant. They should be in the same environment with the same exposure to the amount of sunlight. Okay, so you see that we have a whole bunch of things that we were gonna keep the same. So those are your controlled variables, okay? Um, they should be a lot of them. I tell my kids at least three, but really there should be more than three. So I hope you now have good memory tools to keep apart these words, the independent variable, I change it, the dependent variable is the data, the controlled variables is my list of things I keep the same, whereas control group is my comparison group. Um, if you would like to watch this video here, it gives you examples. So I'll take you through several problems and um, you'll have to pick out the independent and dependent variable, the control group and the controlled variables. I really recommend that watching that video because I think it will help you. So if it helped you, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe because that tells YouTube that um, this is helpful and that they should recommend it to others. Okay, bye. Have a great day.